are you getting? Are you getting the point here? Are you getting the kind of vibes of these EICRs? They're all either basically really old and need loads of remedial work doing just because of the age, or they've just been DIY'd. Okay, so we've got twin and earth there, and then we've got flex. So this one is going to take me longer than I've got. So the whole three EICRs in a day thing, that plan is now out of the window, to be honest. It's just not going to happen because it's 2.30 in the afternoon. And this one is not going to be occupied until the end of the month anyway. So we've got a little bit more time on this one. So what I'm going to do is just um, get out of here and head over to one of the other ones that actually needs doing um, sooner. There's another one that needs doing definitely this week. So I'm going to go and have a look at that one now. Right, so here we are. And interesting one straight away. Look, ooh, vintage light switches. Don't know if they actually do anything or not. And it's quite interesting. There's this um, little sign here. I can't show you the top because it's got the address on it, but it basically is the original sale deed for the property and it was sold for £575 um, back in, when was it? Can't even see, but it looks like a long time ago. Um, yeah, so quite a cool little thing, really. Um, so let's have a little look around. Uh, so sockets look fairly, fairly old. Oh, that's interesting, like a little three pin, uh, old three pin um, kind of five amp socket or something. I wonder if that's actually in use. Consumer unit in the logical place under the stairs. Um, cable entries in the top. Doesn't look like there's many holes in the top. Funny little junction box there. Um, as always, a nice little melange or mixture of um, different circuit breakers, different brands. Looks like there's no RCD protection to most of the lights. Pardon me. Um, there's an office loft, sockets, utility extension sockets, blah, blah, blah. Uh, TNS system, 16 mil tails. Henley block and the tiles go up and over into the top and it looks like there must be some kind of outbuilding maybe that's the office because it's got an armoured cable going out there um, so let's have a little wander around oh that's cool there's a safe oh, this is a proper vintage property isn't it look at that wow ha huh. amazing like it's got some old the old documents oh yeah that's the that's the original deeds and stuff like what I showed you at the entrance Grove and Son late Chubbs Safe Works Birmingham how cool is that look at this amazing so, uh, Extract of the title deed. How cool. What about this one is. I mean, it's all the original documents, which is quite amazing, really. What a lovely old feature. Beautiful old safe, really. I wonder if all the houses under here have them or if it's just just this one. I used to actually live on this street and it's basically like a load of old council houses mostly. But this place looks like a bit different. Looks like some kind of trouser press or something. Yeah, amazing. One of the things I love about being an electrician is being able to be nosy and look around people's properties. I absolutely love it. So let's have a little wander around. Um, so, nice little kitchen. Tiled in accessories, of course. Classic, so it looks like we've got a cooker circuit. Uh, Built-in fridge freezer, a couple of pendant lights. 
Lots of metal switches, so it's going to be interesting to see if they're earthed or not. Um, again, this is another one that actually I'm not going to do the EICR on right now. I'm just having a little look around and then we're going to get probably get Chris to do it next week because I've not got time today. Um, oh, nice little pond with some goldfish. This is definitely one of the nicer properties that I've inspected for this particular agents. Most of them are pretty crummy, to be honest. Um, yeah, very nice. Let's have a look upstairs. What's, what's in here? Okay, it's like a utility cupboard kind of thing. A socket down there. Funny old, that's interesting. So you've got this light with a PIR, which has been wired in, in like ironing board, iron flex a bit random um, and then it looks like there that might be something to do with the incomer it looks like a pyro and then an old bit of like conduit or lead or something be interesting to take that off and have a look what's what's actually in there and then that's the safe that's the back of the safe obviously pretty solid so upstairs so we've got smoke alarms um, yeah, I can't see a date on them. Usually there is a date somewhere. Yeah, this, this side. 2022 again, like the other one, so that's fine. Nice carpet, very vintage, with all this wood panelling and, and stuff. Some old kind of vintage style lights as well. They obviously liked the vintagey stuff. And um, they've stripped back the floorboards and all that. Metal light fittings, I've got a feeling some of these are not going to be earthed. And these switches, although they look really nice, you know, that's a bit dodgy, isn't it? It's got a metal cover. I bet it's, I bet it's not earthed. And you've got those live terminals right there. Old MK, you know, absolutely beautiful things, really but kind of a bit scary when it comes to actual, you know, safety. Uh, old fireplaces are all blanked off. Nothing in the cupboards. Bathroom here, we've got a metal light. Not sure if it'll be earth, same there. Um, all works though, which is better than some things. And again, you know, they've put these funny little metal pendants in because they like the vintage lights. That looks a little bit blackened there. Um, you've got these lovely old switches, but are they earthed? Are they safe? That is the question. And then another floor. Let's have a look at, at the wiring, just out of interest, in this one. Okay, so it's PVC, PVC, looks fairly modern, so that's good at least. It's quite a cool house actually, I quite like it. It's got a nice feel to it, it's light and it doesn't smell horrible which they usually do. And you've got this really cool b kind of bedroom up here with the lovely view. Well, not particularly a lovely view, but a view, massive apple tree in the garden that's kind of taking up all the light from the garden, but it's pretty high up here. This looks like a kind of an extension. And then a bit of DIY stuff gone on here, so that's gonna need checking out. Um, this must be, okay, boiler right up here, all the central heating stuff, cover's fallen off on one of the motorised valves, which looks a bit dodge, but apart from that doesn't look too bad, that's a bit wonky, and then you've got a fan isolator and switch, presumably they've run this off the socket circuit. And it looks fairly 
fairly new, nice little ensuite really, not bad. So, going to get out of here, this is going to be fairly straightforward, mm, half a day's work to do a proper EICR on this, so I'll leave that to Chris for next week. Um, and then we'll go to the next one. Wow. Okay, so this is the last one and um, let me give you a little walk around. So, hardy ha, we have a nice old vintage MEM um, consumer unit. Only RCD protection for downstairs sockets. Looks like upstairs sockets don't have a motion heater, fridge and boiler, upstairs lights, downstairs lights and bell, and cooker, no RCD protection. Um, they're neat little boards these, to be honest. I've done another one in this street which had exactly the same board and I did do a consumer unit change on it. Um, but uh, let's have a little wonder and see what we can find. So this is actually in the downstairs toilet, so you've got a sink just next to the consumer unit, but I'm not really bothered about that to be honest, I don't think that's a big deal. Um, light switch here, metal wall light, living room, um, bell chime is there. The sockets look fairly modern, I would say probably 20 years old this place. Uh, screw missing on the light switch. Nice little exposed connections above that light fitting, so that light needs looking at. And obviously we've got metal light fittings around here, so we're gonna to have to check to see if they're actually earth. We've got uh, metal wall lights as well. Just out of interest, just have a little peek in here. Okay, can't see any connections, but gonna to need to check if they are earth. More often than not, they aren't. We've got down lights in here, so we need to check if they're fire rated or not. Socket here for the kettle, um, cooker socket, old Wiesmann boiler with a kind of a bit of a loose um, central heating controller and a bit of dodgy wiring there to the boiler as well. That's a naughty plumber who's connected that up. Um, microwave, so that's probably got a socket behind it. USB socket here, so you have to be careful when we're doing insulation testing because we will get a funny reading from that. Uh, oh, nice, look at that. So you've got a metal back box with a little bit of flex just coming out up to this light switch. And then under here, a big great hole that you can fit your finger in. And that's flex as well, and it's just fed off this switch fuse connection unit. The fact that it's in like 0.75 flex doesn't bother me that much if it's on a three amp fuse. But the fact that it's got a metal back box with these holes in is not acceptable. So that's gonna be a C2 straight away. Let's have a look upstairs. This is the thing, you know, all of these EICRs so far, you're getting the pick. I keep getting interrupted on this filming because of the phone going off and that one was just the message just came through. A lady has got water in the toaster and now all the sockets have tripped. So I might jump over there in a sec. It's gonna be one of those days today, I tell you. Right, that was the little old lady. She's, poor thing, bless her. She was cleaning out the water filter and accidentally splashed water into the toaster. And now all her electrics have tripped apart from her lights. So I'm gonna to have to nip over there, but I'm gonna do this EICR quickly first because it looks like it's gonna be fairly straightforward to do. Um, but you know, it's half past three in the afternoon. This is my life. Most electricians finish at about four o'clock. I finish probably 6, 6.30 if I'm lucky. Um, so anyway, in here we've got a water heater circuit there um, for the immersion heater. It looks like that's probably just on the mains and then obviously you've got all the various central heating gadgetry like the uh, motorised valve here and the tank thermostat. We'll need to check this to make sure that it's got a, a cutout, a thermal cutout in it. So I have to check that. But everything up here looks kind of fairly straightforward. Right, so just a little remark here on the consumer unit. First of all, you can see it's quite neatly done, so that's good. Uh, these houses around here tended to be quite well built, so that's nice. But there's something a bit funny going on here, which is this kind of like 
bit of corrosion on there it looks like i don't know some kind of dirt and moisture has got on there and the copper has just started to oxidize slightly i don't think it's really a problem but it's just interesting to note um, this is obviously the rcbo uh, neutral and functional earth but they're kind of like crushed a little bit next to the uh, buzz bar here which is a bit dodgy I don't know why they've taken it out the front like that instead of behind but that is not great because that can easily just short out to the functional earth and go bang um, so uh, yeah that probably needs sorting out other than that there doesn't seem to be any overheating or anything here so that's good it looks like we've got two rings one for upstairs one for downstairs a cooker circuit and immersion heater and two lighting circuits and then fridge and boiler circuit so gonna just run around to do an r2 wonder lead test and see what we find so here's an interesting one for you just going around doing my long wonder lead testing and the uh, cooker switch got very high reading now usually i go onto the switch um screws and I got a high reading there, but sometimes you think, oh, maybe the back box has not quite got good contact or something. So then I go to the earth pin of the socket and that usually improves it. But in this case, it doesn't. So, and just to compare, like here, we've got a nice low reading, you see, that's what it should be. So there's something dodgy going on in the back of there. So I'm gonna have a little look at that now. Right, so even in the back of the box, touching directly on the CPC of the twin and earth cable for the, cooker it's quite high so i reckon there must be a dodgy connection in the actual consumer unit so i'm going to go and check that now it's this first circuit here so that's this one here and what did i notice straight away it's just loose it's never been tightened up literally that is like probably from the day it was first installed that was just loose or somebody's been and done any another EICR previously and disconnected it, but I don't think so. Um, let's pull it out and have a little look at the wire and see if there's any kind of damage to it or anything. Interesting, I've never really come across that before. So it's got a mark on it as if it has been connected in at some point, but um, it's not now. So. It's possible that it's come loose over time, but all that needs is all that needs is tightening up, and then that should be fine now. So, got my screwdriver on it and just tighten it up. And then we'll take that reading again and see what a difference that makes. Okay. Something's not quite right there. Maybe my clips come off. Ah, oh, yeah. I took it off, didn't I? Stupid or. Yeah, that's more like it. Sorted. Nice when you can fix a fault easily like that. All right, so we've got a non earthed light here in the bathroom, metal. This one is earthed, but this one isn't. Shaver socket's earthed, ceiling light's earthed but that one isn't, so that needs sorting out. Um, let's have a look in here. So these metal lights in here as well are not earthed. Um, presumably the connections are just hidden behind here and they've not connected the earth wires. So I'm gonna whip one of these off and have a little look behind and see what's what. Architrave boxes. <laughs> I've not seen one of those in a while. So. This is what we call an architrave box. It's basically a very thin box that it's designed to actually put a, a switch in. Um, if you've got like a really thin, um, re a really thin space where, this is called architrave, right? Sometimes you have like a really small gap and then another door and you have to fit a switch in between that's where you would put an architect, architrave switch in. And that's what these little boxes are designed for. It's like a, a half a width of a, a switch. Now there is earth wire here, they've taped it black, which is a bit weird. So that probably indicates that it's a DIY job. Um, but it is connected. The flex 
presumably is connected because it's got a little earth tab there. So I'm guessing that the actual cable earth is not connected, but we'll do a test on that back box and just check that. Yeah, so as I suspected, this is not earthed, even though there's an earth wire. And if we look at this switch here, which I've just taken off, there's something really weird going on here. So you've got this three core, which is actually in use going presumably to that light, or maybe it does two-way switching. Yeah, something like that. Uh, that's got the earth tag to the back box, which is earthed. But then these are the CPCs for those cables. They go through the box, which is really weird. Taped up in black tape, but here they've got like green yellow on. I'm wondering. Okay, these are actually the blacks. So these are the CPCs coming through. These are the blacks. And then you've got Really, really weird. So presumably one goes to one wall light and the other goes to the other wall light. But I'm gonna to have to take the wall light here off and investigate that. DIY again, you see. Why is it there are so many people out there who think that they know how to do it themselves, so why pay an electrician? Absolutely ridiculous. And this could be the owner or it could be a tenant who's done this. Obviously it had something about wall lights that they loved and metal lights specifically, and they decided, well, you know, why pay an electrician when you can do it yourself? What have we got here? Exactly the same kind of setup, really. We've got a twin and earth coming in, live and neutral, and then we've got the CPC taped up black attached to the back box there. So presumably those two are these same two, these reds, red and blacks, that's a bit dodgy. But why do they come through here and go down in the wall? There's no connection to the switch, so it's almost like, I mean, maybe they've just disconnected them. Maybe that's it, maybe this is the permanent live in and then these two are the switch lives going out, that would make sense, and the neutrals coming in. But where do they come from? I mean, it's so bizarre to have them coming in from below like that, that's what I don't really understand. I'm gonna take this switch off here and just see if there's an explanation to be had. Plot thickens. These got funny screws on this one as well. Not your normal socket screws. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's something interesting behind here. All right, not really anything interesting. It's literally just live and switch line and then the three core going across to there. So there's no connection at all. But what if they come from there? Is there anything on the other side of the wall? Oh, I wonder if it comes from this switch. The switch is cracked a bit anyway. If you can see that. Yeah, see that there, it's just a bit cracked. Could come from there and go underneath, that's a possibility. So I might take that one off and have a look. It's a bit tight, but it's just normal again, to, uh, twin and earth and a three core. So it does the two way switching to there and three core goes across and then the twin and earth goes up to the light for the permanent live and switch line. So it's not that. So my b best guess now, mm, that tile, that tile's a bit proud. That's a bit dodgy, isn't it? But my best guess is that it's gonna be fed off this socket for some reason. So I'm gonna take the socket cover off now and have a look. So it was fed off this socket. That is it. That cable's completely knackered anyway, but it's been disconnected. So these wall lights are not actually working. Um, so I should have sort of tested that, I guess, and just tried to turn everything on and off before I started delving into this but they're not working, they've been disconnected, which is fine. It's still a bit confusing that they're there, but um, at least they're safe, they're not gonna cause anyone harm. Right, well, I was just about to pack up and go home and I thought, oh, I've not taken any of those down lights down and I'm not sure if they're actually fire rated or not, so I'll take one down and check. 
And while I'm at it, I'll do an earth loop impedance test at one of the lights. And guess what I found? You're not gonna believe this. Let me flip the camera around and I'll show you. So this is the end of line down light. And, oh, look at that. So we've got line conductor and CPC conductor connected into the same terminal. So that means the, what's supposed to be the earth or CPC in these cables is actually connected to live. So if somebody came along and stripped one of these, they'd be in for a real big shock. Ah, so what do I do now? I think I've got to take down the other lights and see if they're all the same and then figure out how to redo all of these. Typical. Again, I reckon DIY jobby. DIY disaster. Right, so seriously guys, I think I've won the prize for worst terminated down lights ever. Can you see that? Seriously? <sighs> I just can't believe it. That is absolutely beyond belief. And the terminal screw is not even screwed in properly. It's fallen out, look. Absolutely mad. Well, that was another ridiculous one. Man, I really do know how to find these jobs, honestly. <laughs> anyway, let me know in the comments what you think. I'd love to know. As always, if you haven't subscribed, please do because I do post regular videos here all about the life of an electrician and if you hit the notification bell you won't miss out and if you did enjoy this video give us a thumbs up it really helps the YouTube algorithm to tell other people about these videos thanks for watching and have a great day